2 p.m. Um, please note that this meeting may be recorded and subsequently made available to the public for listening purposes. Uh, do we have said their apologies, please? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, there are eight members present, and I've got apologies from Councillor Peacock so far. Um, Councillor Ian Crothers and Councillor Tuckfield are not present, but maybe along later in the meeting. I've um, just been advised that Councillor Crothers has put in his apologies. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, the next item is the Enterprise and Services Subcommittee minutes of the meeting of the 10th of January. These were uh, noted at the last e &I committee. I'd be happy to note those minutes. Thank you very much. Go on to item four then. Enterprise and DNG refurbishment of redundant council property facility small scale industrial units, Stapleton Road, uh, Annan. Um, this is an example of the entrepreneurial approach I believe we all endorsed at our previous um, subcommittee. And we should be encouraging the service to come forward with similar and fresh thinking opportunities that takes a different perspective, thinking differently, and give the committee business scoping opportunities for us to consider. Uh, a business scoping opportunity has been developed for the former site, Stapleton Road Depot in Annan. Uh, this is the former grounds and waste depot in Annan, has sat vacant for a number of years now. The site has uh, been previously marketed in 2011-2012 without attracting any potential purchase purchasers. Enterprise and DNG, in conjunction with Business Gateway, had been in discussions with local businesses regarding development opportunities, but these have now been concluded. I think also they went to the Annan Regeneration uh, meeting uh, and, and had discussions there as well with local members. This is a key site within Annan, and the current building is continuing to deteriorate uh, members are asked to consider the recommendations for the site, one for immediate remarketing for sale and enterprise and DNG work, work up options for the site, ranging from the disposal uh, to redevelopment of the site for small-scale industrial units, which meet the key principles as defined in the commercial development plan. Um, Head of service, do you wish to add anything to the report? Uh, no, Chair, happy to take any questions. I know that, that uh, some small businesses have, uh, have said already that they would like to have small business units in Annan, um, and certainly at the Annan Regeneration, they were keen for this to be de developed. So, George? Yeah, Chair, it's my recollection at a, a meeting between the Chief Exec and the, the Independent Group when questioned about this. This is two or three months ago. Two or three months ago, the Chief Exec, to my recollection, uh, assured us that that building would be demolished. Well, are you going to say that? Uh, Chair, it's very much part of the process because obviously the site has not uh, uh, been marketed for a period of time and it's obviously that it's twofold whether someone wishes to buy it in its current state uh, to, to deal with it or if uh, so uh, requested by this committee we can look at the various options and one of those could be demolition to provide a, a clear site for further development. Um, but there, it's intrinsically linked into the process. It's either sell as is uh, or take it to the next step for either having a clear site or a clear site with the end development opportunities beyond that. Thank you very much. Uh, Alistair Lane, and then Graham. Thanks very much indeed, Chair. On the face of it, I have no problems whatsoever, sir, with what's been suggested. The one thing I wouldn't want to do uh, would be to do nothing. I don't think doing nothing in this case is an option. And I have no uh, problems having gone through the report with the proverbial fine tooth comb. Uh, no problems with, uh, with both of the recommendations. But as always, Chair, I'd be interested to hear what your uh, colleagues and yourself uh, have to say on it. But as I say, in the meantime, I want to make my position clear. No difficulties with, what, with what's being proposed. Thank you, Alistair Graham. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, just looking, at, there's comment in the, in the report about the, the, the state of the building is deteriorating, etc. Um, but when you look at the photographs, the gutters are full of grass. And why haven't we been doing something to maintain this property to try and stop the deterioration in the, in, in, in the fabric of the building? I mean, when you get gutters as full of grass and muck as that, the water's bound to be going somewhere, and it's no, obviously down the gutters. I just would like a comment on that, because it, it won't have helped to value the property. All right. Certainly since the, the, the old uh, 
through DG First when the, the, the uh, grounds maintenance and the waste collection service pulled out of there. That site has basically sat dormant. For, and there, to be fair, there has been minimal maintenance done to that building, obviously, because it was being marketed as a site to, to, be, to be sold. Um, it's a fair comment. Gutters are full. Uh, there's weeds, and bits and pieces in there, but there are also operational issues about going up onto the, this building because of the nature of its construction. So we've been very mindful of that as well. There are other issues uh, internally to the building as well that have meant that uh, going onto the roof and round about it has not been, been an option. Ronnie, I should have said at the start, welcome to your first and perhaps last enterprise in D&D <laughs> committee for this session, for this session. Um, but you've got uh, a, a question? Well, coming from running, uh, we've talked to Ronnie about this over many years, uh, primarily because it, it's a, a breeding ground for uh, seagulls and it causes a lot of problems to the people near that building. It's past its sell by date. They really, uh, I hear that what members are saying about the grass growing out of the gutter and that. It really needs knocked down. So we never bought it enough to knock it down anyway. So uh, like Alistair, I agree with the options in here. Try and sell it again, but if not, then let's take it forward. Because um, it has something has to be done with that. It's just, it's not serving any purpose. I mean, it's, it's a few years sitting there, so I'm quite uh, happy with the suggestions and the recommendations. Ivor? Chair, how much of a budget are we allocating to actually look at redevelopment? You know, if you're just looking at uh, demolition, the sort of internal costs of that would be going out and getting costs to remove the roofing materials and doing away with the rest. Whereas if you're going into architectural fees for redesign, redevelopment, etc., it could be quite a lot to bring back three or four different schemes. Are we allocating a specific amount to allow us to do a certain amount of work so that we can come back and say, is it worthwhile going ahead with a redevelopment scheme? Or are we just saying, cut launch away and bring back whatever you think? Well, you know, and also, um, if, if there's a, a need for, for small business units as well, because we've had a discussion on this before. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we've done some research around, is there a need for anything down in that area. Uh, and we, we believe, uh, and we would obviously bring it to this committee uh, for approval, uh, whatever the scoping uh, element would be, we believe there is a potential for uh, Annan to, to operate with something like 22 small business, business spaces that uh, would fit the need of the market down in that area, low cost, easy access uh, for people to start their business opportunities within that area. And that would form part of a, a commercial business case that would come forward here for members to scrutinize and to make uh, any comment on that then would allow us to, to go forward to, uh, to P&R to seek that funding. Um, there is obviously two elements if the members were so wish the demolition and obviously if that was the option to go forward, then uh, we would we would seek to get that on a separate basis. Okay, I mean, I, I know for for a fact that certainly small businesses have been talking to me in the Annan area. Certainly, there's a couple for Gretna who are interested in that particular site for small business units to start up with. But my concern is that you know if, if it's already been on the market, nobody's been interested in it. I, I, I'm of the opinion that we just go straight forward into the business case and you bring that that back here for the the range of options that are actually in there. There will be a cost to that, of course, but there's a potential income stream there as well for the council in the future, and it's quite a quite a large income stream. So, my my suggestion would be that that, that it, you don't have to take it to the market. It's already been on there. It hasn't even sold at two hundred thousand. Originally went on at three hundred thousand. Now at two hundred thousand. Nobody's been interested in the last year and a bit. We go straight to the options and the business case for that, um, and and that's that's what I would recommend to the. The, the members, if they, if they so wish. Jim? Yeah, thanks, sir. I have no problems with what you're proposing. It's just that when you look at the recommendations and I hear what you say, it just doesn't make it clear that the report will be brought back to the committee on the range of options. It just says that uh, ranging from disposal to full development of the site, it doesn't actually say that the report will come back. Uh, uh, it, would, it would have to come back in with a full business case for that particular one. Alistair? 
simple way to sort that, of course, is when it comes to the recommendations, Chair, is it would make it clear it's a remit, uh, a remit to report. In other words, Ronnie uh, does, does his, uh, his, his, his investigates his range of options and it reports back to the committee at the time and gets approval uh, before we take it any further. So are we happy to move forward with the, the full business case? It doesn't have to go back on the market. It's been there for several years anyway. There's been no interest. And go forward with the options to come back with a business case to this, this uh, subcommittee. Okay, are we happy with that? In 2.1, members are asked to agree that the site is marketed for sale in June. So members have agreed that the site will not be marketed for that, that, sale. That's correct. The, the recommendation would be 2.1 that the site is not marketed for sale. It goes straight into the enterprise and DG work up to work up options for the site ranging from disposal to full redevelopment of the site to be brought back here to an enterprise and subcommittee at a future date. Yep, happy? Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. Moving on to uh, uh, item number five. Um, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of our Council on Enterprise and Services to provide members on an update on the National Apprentice of the Year Awards 2017 Enterprise and Services, attending the Building and Housing Renewable Annual Seminar in February. This was a, a very busy uh, couple of days with sessions titled Future Proofing Our Services, The Need to Be More Commercial, with our Chief Exec Gavin Stevenson was a guest speaker and provided a very thoughtful uh, and provoking presentation of what we are actually doing in Dumfries and Gall Galloway. As part of this event, the annual Scottish Trade and Non-Trade Apprentice of the Year assessments and awards are held, and I'm very pleased to advise that Dumfries and Galloway had three representatives called to assessment and awards from Enterprise and Service. While there were three apprentices on the day, it's worth noting that in total five portfolios were submitted from Dumfries and Galloway. Two staff didn't on this occasion reach the final assessments, which was Ryan Love and David Henderson, both joiners, but were complimented on their work portfolio and submissions. And I'm delighted we have with us today to have our apprentices who represented our council. So Daniel McTaggart, if you put your raise your arm. He's a first year apprentice plumber based at Cargan Towers. We have Liam Brawls. Liam is a third year apprentice plumber based at Culhorn Depot in Sunrar. And Andrew Ray. Andrew has just completed his modern apprenticeship on quantity surveyor. I know from Enterprise and Services, developing our future stars has been and is a real passion within the building and maintenance team, and we'd ask members to recognise these rising stars for reaching the final of the 2017 awards. Thank you very much. Well done, you guys. Um, do you want a photograph now? Yeah. Okay. I do know that even though they are young, they can drink, because I had a, a few drinks with them as well. Um, members, following on from the last Enterprise and Service Subcommittee, we were, we were, where we received an overview uh, from Fleet and Operations and Facility Services, I'd like to introduce Stephen Trotter and Mike Fox, who will provide a brief overview of the respective service spheres, which is building and maintenance service, and Roads Constructions, Maintenance and Waste Collection Service. I think Stephen's up first, and we'll hear from him. PowerPoint system. Oi! Working. Other pictures there you're seeing is some of the facilities that we have scattered throughout the region. We've worked from four strategically placed depots. We have 32 service tradesmen with 12 apprentices. We have 16 managerial and technical staff, including myself. And we cover all 2,481 square miles of D&G 
365 days a year, 24 hours a day. We maintain over 3,000 local homes in all council buildings, and we're commercially, commercially advantageous. We may also work outside the region. Up on the screen there is a minute is some of our strategic clients. We maintain the core skilled workforce by dedicating to provide a quality service not only to our council, but to our key strategic partnerships. Training and developing new trades and income streams via our apprentices, which are over a third of our workforce. The varied client list ensures that we maintain this workforce and the skills that they possess. Up on the screen at the minute, we work, you'll see our I, I, IT system. Working with our IT partners, we're able to ensure a constant contact with our workforce. We know where they are, and we can direct them as required, cutting down on traveling time and ensuring that our clients get the best service and respond times possible. One of our particular clients, Lorburn Housing, we're now developing a system that integrates fully with their system. So basically, Lorburn can see where our workforce is, and if there's a problem with individual properties, they can know exactly where the person is and they can they know what's going on. So if someone's going to a property, they know exactly where that person is and are able to direct their customers accordingly. If you, any of your members are over at Cargan Towers, I would invite you to come and have a look at the system because it's quite impressive. Last year in October, working in conjunction with Lorburn, we, in, we formed a dedicated voids team. At the start, we indicated we got a I, one member of staff, and we trained them on the mobile surveys, which was linked directly into the IT system. As you can see in October, these are the void times. The numbers on the left there are the number of working days to get a property back in. As you see in October, there was a drastic fall when we, in, we brought that in place. What we've done since in January, we brought in a, a dedicated void team, a responsive team that all the, these guys do are putting houses back into the market for Lorburn. And you see again, the figures are coming for coming down again, and I think the results really speak for themselves in the fact that the team's working. But what it has done is it's dropped Lorburn's figures, but we're actually now hitting all our homeless figures, we're hitting our figures with urban, because we've now got one team doing a core job, and we're able to direct them, rather than trying to pull people out of the workforce to go and do these things. By having a business-based approach to our service, We've got a closer working relationship with our customers, both internal and external. We've improved our service delivery, like the last slide, we've, we've, we've seen the benefits. We've improved our skill base of our workforce by working for a varied work stream. We're SME inclusive. We have a more engaged workforce and apprentices who know what's going on. With information flow to these guys has increased because we can contact them as they are working and provide work streams to them a more professional service delivery managed by the council for our region. Have any questions, Chair? Any questions for Steve, Ivor? So the mobile kind of technology. I think it was about maybe 10 years ago, we sat in here and we got a presentation from a guy on how to work better. One of the things was you send out a tradesman to Jimmy's to, because Jimmy's got a fault with his toilet. One of the, you send out one of the apprentices, and you're told that his ball cock's not working. And when you get there, you find out it's not the ball cock, it's something else. And therefore, they have to go back again and do a diff another day. Now, the guy that was here, I can't remember what his name was, but he said, I think it was Sunderland, what they do is they send a note to him. He goes with his mobile van, sees what's wrong, and then sends a note in so that the first time you go to actually fix it, you're actually fixing the proper thing rather than thinking you're going for one job and you end up doing another. Is that involved in your system as well? <coughs> well, thanks, Stephen. Obviously, that's helping our housing strategy as well uh, and, and our... Um, mission to try and get best value uh, for the, the public pound. So thanks very much to you and your team for, for dealing with that. Mike, do you want to come forward and talk about roads, construction, maintenance and waste collection service? This, this could be interesting. Thanks, Chair. Uh, it's an introduction for those that 
don't know me, Mike Fox. Uh, and I always have to read this title at the moment. Roads Construction Maintenance and Waste Collection Manager for, for the region. Now, uh, what I've put down in bullet points is really the, the areas under my remit. Um, road maintenance and construction speaks for itself. Street lighting, installation and maintenance. Um, as part of that, there's, there's currently an, an ongoing program through capital expenditure for uh, LED replacement throughout the region. I, and that, that falls under, under my remit. Commercial contracts, uh, I've put down Scotland Transurf, which was predated by uh, AMI, which is uh, effectively the, the trunk road maintenance contract. We also have a public utility reinstatement contracts in place. I've put down Scottish Water and uh, Scotia Gas Networks. They've been in place for a, a period of years now, I, and I'll, I'll talk a wee bit more about those uh, on the next slide. I, and also refuse collection, uh, domestic waste, and, and commercial waste collection. What we have in general terms, um, we've got 97 roads operatives, five street lighting operatives, and 114 refuse operatives, which are, includes any supervisory staff. And they currently operate out of seven depots across the region. Uh, some of these depots are integrated. Um, we have Barn at Newton Stewart, we have Abercrombie, Castle Douglas, and also Hart Hill at Lockerbie, where we have multiple service coming out with the, the one depot. If I can maybe spend a wee bit more time on, on this slide, uh, what I've put down is, in my view, opinion is that the challenges, but challenges lead to opportunities as well. And the first one, core council activity for us and, and efficiencies that we're looking at. Uh, the very nature of it, um, the word commercial gets used, but the, the core council activity is, is the backbone of, of for us as a service or services. The, uh, the very nature of it, uh, we're constantly looking for efficiencies. Um, one of the, the big efficiencies for us at the moment is, and it, it tags on the back of what Stephen has just talked about, about the implementing of mobile working within the services. Uh, the, the road services is on the cusp now uh, over the next month or two of actually deploying uh, what we term mobile operating within the, the service. Uh, in simple terms, what this does is that it allows a, a work stream from effectively to be a, a customer complaint coming in through the council uh, switchboard, which will go through a process and eventually lead to a repair. And what will happen through that process is that the customer will get updates throughout that process. So for this, this sort of situation where previously um, we, we've probably not been the best at keeping in contact with customers in relation to this. This is a, an automated system that allows us the, the efficiency of keeping in contact with our customers. Number two, the, the commercial business growth is, is something uh, that we're looking at actively as well to, to help develop and, and retain the workforces that we've got. I mean, we, in the past, we've been very good at actually attracting uh, what I would term outside work. We went through a period where uh, people were, were actually coming to us interested in, in forming some sort of uh, working relationship where, um, whether it be uh, other public utility companies, uh, where we're not actually having to go and directly knock on their door, they're, they're coming to us because of our performance. Uh, on some of these other contracts. So it's an area that uh, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time actually looking at, at where we can start to develop these opportunities. One of the, item three is, is one that also requires a, a significant amount of investment and time, it is to look at how we can integrate the services under my control. Um, the, the aspect about street lighting, roads and waste is that it's something that we need to look at, how we can actually look at the skilling of our workforce that we've got the potential to allow to deploy them on, on different activities. 
Now, this is still in its infancy, I would hasten to say, and there are a lot of challenges with that, but I can see a huge amount of benefits from it long term. Item four, workforce strategy. We've, over, well, many, many years actually, we've got to, to a position where we had a, a workforce in simple terms that was aging. Uh, we had a, a very large proportion that were um, at the, the latter part of the, the working life. And it was crucial that we, we started to turn this on its head. And through uh, investment, certainly, but also through opportunity, we've, we've, um, we've managed to uh, take on board modern apprentices and actually turn it around for the now members of, of the actual workforce. And we're in the process at the moment where we've got uh, school leavers who have uh, left school for a period of time uh, and been ab unable to get work. We have taken them on through a, a six-month uh, learning program and we've been able to actually retain these guys because we've been able to develop the skills over that six-month period. So we're starting to now see that the change in the, uh, the work, the, the age profile. Thank you. That's, that's it. Any questions? Understanding this is the delivery part of the way side of things rather as the the you know the E and I side of things. This Mike delivers the, the, the operations that he suggested. Uh, is everybody ha Ronnie? Uh, you were saying about the uh, people put a complaint in and keep them updated. I remember Charles Clemmy coming to the area committee about three years ago, two years ago, with this new scheme that we could interrogate. There's nothing more frustrating as members if we put a complaint in about a pothole or some resurfacing and you've got to badger people to get an answer back. Whereas if we had a system that we could go in ourselves and have a rough date, I know you can't guarantee dates because of priorities, but that, that, that seems to be lacking and I, just, I don't think it's improved any. So if you could do it for, uh, well, you're saying external customers, surely you could do it for us members and all, you know. That was an observation rather than a question. Unless you can answer it, Mike. I can remember those very discussions um, at, at Annandale Area Committee. And it, it's an area that we still need to, to close out. Um, but it certainly requires more than EEI to be involved because it, it's a corporate, corporate issue as well. But yeah, there's an area of weakness still. Well, yeah, business and technology are weak. <laughs> Jim. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I noticed you had waste collection, household and commercial. Uh, I'm going to ask the really nippy question, uh, and it is the delivery side. We agreed way back on the 1st of July for a new system of separated, source separated collection in Wigtonshire to be rolled out through the whole of Wigtonshire. When's it actually going to happen? Because we're still using the old system where I stay, and I stay in Wigtonshire. The current update on that is that we have just more or less concluded the, the final planning of the, the rollout. So the, the intention is over the next three or four weeks is to start the communication uh, with everybody about the, the next phase of that rollout, which covers the whole of Wigton. Yeah, thanks for letting me back in. So it's taken us 10 months to get that sorted out. How long is it going to take to get the other three areas sorted out? The, the situation with Wigton is that uh, once we get this fully deployed, we have to then do a, a period of uh, an analysis and monitoring and ultimately a cost analysis. So that requires a period of time. Uh, and I hasten to say, at this moment, I, I can't put an exact date on that. Willie? Aye, Chair, I don't know if that's entirely acceptable I'm looking here at Alistair rather than yourself uh, in terms of how and when the, the, the service was to be rolled out. But could we go to that in terms of the operative that you referred to in your slide? I think it was about 140, is it? Could we look at that slide again? We're no there now. <laughs> No matter, I think it was about 114 operatives. And uh, I take it that's 
uh, full-time operatives employed by the council. Right. Because the question, I think, was, uh, uh, and I was looking back at the minute of the last meeting, the question was asked either in here or at EEI in terms of agency workers, and, and, and someone was going to look at that. It, it, does that include, it, I take it that 114, does not include the agency workers? And, and uh, if not, how many agency workers have we got, and how long have they been employed or engaged uh, as agency workers? Ronnie, you want to come on that? Thank you, Chair, if I can. Uh, in relation to um, uh, your question, Councillor, we have a complement of full-time staff, and we also have a complement of uh, temporary uh, contract staff, which are through the Council's books. They are not agency staff. So we have a figure, uh, and I'm happy to give full clarification uh, to you, but I think that number is between six and eight that are classed as temporary uh, waste employees that are on the, uh, the council's books. They are not agency staff. Ivor and Graham. A couple of points. You brought up about integration and how you're going to get the services. Here's a wee idea. You put the bin men on at night, right? And as they gun run, they notice which street lights are out. And with their mobile working, they can tap it in. And then the next day, when the fella comes to fix the street lights, he can then get his mobile out and say, there's potholes in this street and that street. And that can I get some more working together, see? Um, but that's say, commercial. Is that you trying to do some operational stuff there? Yeah. Like this? That was a wee suggestion. They can... They can leave it hang there or whatever. Commercial. I had a bit of concern about the point that you said you didn't need to go out and look for work because uh, work was coming to you. Uh, I've been on at this one before. Commercial waste uplift. I phoned up because we have a shop and I decided I'll give the council first chance. Oh, well, I didn't can. Tell us what you need or finish some figures and come back to us. I then phone an independent commercial sector one, private, and we'll come and see you and we'll tell you what you need. Now, someone who doesn't understand the business, I'm going to the private sector because that's more helpful than what the service I felt I was getting from the council. How are you going to change that kind of attitude to make sure that if someone phones you up, you're actually going to be there? and say, I want your business, rather than, well, we'll do what we can for you, but uh, you tell us what you want. Ryan, you want to come on? Thanks, Chair. Um, obviously, members, uh, at the last committee, we had a, a discussion around our uh, PPI team, People Performance Improvement Efficiency team, and the part of that, that linked into the marketing of the services and the strategy, but also in relation to uh, the customer interface to ensure that there is a better approach so that we, we represent and we replicate the same quality of uh, customer interface that the private sector and our, our, our competitors do in that. So uh, rest assured that is something that's high on our agenda. We're, we're changing that recent steps about people coming in to modifying the, the shape and the structure within our, our service will allow us to adapt and change that. So what you have had before, rest assured, it will, as we get this up and running very, very quickly, you will not see that that, that sort of uh, approach. It will be very uh, sharp, slick, and business like. Graham, then, Willie. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I'm assuming that you, you, you talked about transfer contract with, um, presumably, A75, A77, M74, or whatever. Um, have you got carte blanche to go out and sort a pothole when you see it, or do you have to wait and them telling you there's a pothole there when it's been there for six months? In response to that, first of all, the, the trunk road contract um, covers A76, A77, A751, A75, A701. Uh, doesn't include the motorway. That's Autolink. Um, we act 
as a subcontractor to Scotland Transserve. So we don't have any remit to be on the road network unless it's under their instructions. It's as simple as that. Willie? Yeah, Chair, there's a number of issues in here, and I'll come back to the one that I've made, and, and Ronnie said, you know, agency workers, then he referred to temporary contract staff, and I think he said six and eight, not six, six or eight. I think I've asked the question in here before, or, 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 or at one of the committees, as I say, either here at EI, and I was fully expecting a, a more detailed report as to staff, because it has been said that, that the, the, as Ronnie described, there, agency workers working two, three more years, uh, and even temporary contract staff, uh, I'd be interested to know exactly how long they, they, they have been employed. So maybe if we could get some detail, uh, and I know it's the last committee of this session, uh, but it would be interesting to, to, to you know, see the detail of that. Uh, before it and all the ramifications that go with it. In terms of the last remark there, uh, if I could, uh, uh, and I heard you say the A77 there, given that we've only got from Stranraer some eight miles uh, and then it goes into South Ayrshire, uh, and I'm not too sure if that's maybe uh, the best, you know, given the, 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 the what is raging on social media in terms of uh, potholes, ruts, uh, and the dangerous condition by comparison to the 75, and it's got its own problem, is the, 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 the condition of the 77, uh, whether, you know, we just go out and fix it, or we've got to wait on transfer saying, right, you go and you fix whatever it is that, 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 that needs there. Can I go, you know, in, in terms of uh, complaints and then update, uh, and I heard what you had to say on that one. And we've got a system with community councils, the CCES, uh, 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 and I can report on at least one community council west of the region that they are particularly uh, speak highly of, of, of the service, but that's one. There are others that, that, that don't come back with the same glowing uh, remarks in terms of responding to their uh, complaints within uh, the CCES system. Maybe we could hear uh, on, on that and try to improve the service that we give to uh, community councils. And, and the last one is on, on the lighting, you know, where I think we've got three to ten days uh, as a target date and whether we are uh, hitting those dates in terms of sorting them if it's more than four within three days, or if it's one, we have up to ten days, and whether the operatives have, are spread throughout the region, and that we've got them west of the region uh, in quantity as much as there are throughout the region. Yeah. Chair, if I can, just a couple of things. I, I think it picks up on the point that Councillor Hislop raised with the adaption of the total mobile system and mobile working, that is going to give the customer a greater awareness. Uh, and when I say the customer, I include your good selves in that. It's going to have greater awareness of uh, the state of a fault, a defect, or a clarification. Uh, and that is something that's going to benefit us all. So that a lot of work is currently being done in that. So that will help and improve. So it's all part of changing the customer journey and making that focus more, more towards what the customer wants to know in real time what that situation is. In relation, relation to the lighting, um, I, the targets we are hitting uh, I, and the percentage that we are completing within the time is very high. And again, uh, we're happy to give you the exact information. Don't have it readily here with us just now. But uh, that continues to grow uh, as, we, as the rollout of the LED program continues. Uh, so that's something that uh, the lighting service has uh, over the last few years, again, similar to the Apprentice Award, has been recognised for the level and the quality of service that it's delivering uh, nationally across not only Scotland, but in relation to performance targets across the whole of the UK. But again, I can, I'm happy to give you uh, the, the exact figures, Councillor Stobie, just for your information. And with regards to agency workers and all that sort of stuff? 
In regards to the, 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 the workers, I, I'm happy we can we can look at this as part of the business process, bringing it to this uh, uh, committee. Uh, we can give an understanding of all the profile of uh, the workers, and happy to do that at a later date, Chair. Uh, so the 77, I'm getting do noise, uh, sorry, mate. Uh, the 77, yes, it's a very short length, uh, and as Mike rightly says, we can only do the work that is discharged to us to be delivered under a uh, contractual arrangement with Transserve. But uh, in relation to where we go on that section of the road, um, that's, n that's not an issue. We have gone well up, we've gone right up to Girvan and done bits and pieces. But again, it's down to their instruction based around the capacity of their own workforce to deliver that. And if they if they wish to come and speak to us to do stuff on that any of the routes, we're more than happy to talk to them and look to help uh, aid the income generation. Alistair, you want to come in? Yes, indeed, Chair. I want to get back to the issue of the waste uh, collection service. But, uh, this council, as far as I'm concerned, has a, an obligation to provide consistent and even-handed services from Langham in the east to Dromore in the west. It doesn't matter whether it's refuse collection, waste collection, or, or whatever. That, that is the, the dictum by which you know, the, the council ultimately has to operate. And it seems to me, uh, you know, what has happened here, or more importantly, some of us would argue, what hasn't happened here uh, is leaving the council open, as it were, the challenge of acting in what could be construed in certain, uh, certain quarters as in a discriminatory fashion. Now, you know, what, what, as, you know, what, what, what exacerbates the situation as far as I'm concerned, is to hear Mike say when Jim McClung puts the, the, the question to him that we really uh, don't know uh, how long it will take or how long it will be before, firstly, uh, you know, what's taking place in mid Galloway is rolled out for the rest of Wigginshire. And arguably, some of us would say, even more importantly, Chair, what thereupon is taking place in Wigginshire is rolled out to the rest of the region. And I would have to say, with the greatest of respect, that simply is not acceptable. Uh, so I would hope that on the back of members' comments here today, that Ronnie, Alistair, Speedy, and whoever else uh, will get their heads together and will at least be able to give us some indication of the timescales that we're talking about, you know, not only for the members of this subcommittee chair, but as it were, you know, for the member, you know, the, the wider cohort of members in the council as a whole, because it's an issue uh, that we are certainly in a, in a mid Galloway context tasked with and, and, and challenged on in occasions. And I rather suspect it's probably the same elsewhere in the region. So I think, Chair, you know, given the, the, the seriousness of this, we are entitled, uh, as it were, to, to make these requests and to get the appropriate and positive uh, and, and, and clarifying response. I'm grateful to you, Chair, as always. Thank you. Alistair, do you want to respond? Yes, Chair, thank you. I'll, I'll just say a few words. I'm sure Mike uh, will, will, will uh, deliver and get the rest of Wigton sorted out very quickly, and, and, and he's well on that job. As far as the rest of the region is concerned, it is frustrating, and I, I acknowledge members' frustration about it. And it's a very complex situation in that we can't introduce any further collection changes until we vary our waste PFI contract. And that's uh, currently under process through a change in law process through, through the contract itself, and it's proving uh, very difficult. Uh, there will be a report that comes to the new council early, probably in, in June, uh, that sets out where the council is uh, in this process and sets out what options are open to it. But I must admit, it's one of the most complex problems that I've dealt with in my career here at Dumfries and Galloway, and it's something that frustrates me greatly. But we're working as hard as we can to see the wood from the trees to get this thing sorted out. Can I just ask on top of that, Alistair, obviously bringing back any some options into the new council, would one of those options actually bring in the waste collection service back into the council? I'm talking about the PFI contract. Well, th thank you, Chair. That, that would be a very serious matter because that would mean uh, voluntarily giving up the contract or, or breaking the contract, and, and that's not, uh, not in our plans, and certainly... Uh, not, not, not for discussion and open forum. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Members, can we thank Stephen and Mike for the, the presentation? Oh, sorry, Ronnie. Just one final question. I know over the years we've looked at different solutions to potholes and uh, different materials that's emerging. And I've just wondered if you had a we go at that plastic stuff that the local, somebody local to me, is, is they've got funding through Europe now. 
I wondered, have we seen that? Do you know how it works? Or are we going to try it as a, as a sort of wee pilot? I think the product you're talking about is Mac, Mac Reber, which, in essence, what it does is part of the, the bitumen is replaced by a, a polymer, which is uh, plastic derived. And uh, at the moment, we're just about ready to look at two or three locations where we're actually going to trial the material. Um, I know that Cumbria have done quite a few, uh, and there's other local authorities as well. So it, it, it is imminent, uh, a trial using it. Okay, well, thanks very much, Stephen and Mike, for the presentation. Members, um, <coughs> as, part, as part of this uh, part of the agenda, I've, I've got no other other business. However, I'd like to consider adoption of resolution to exclude the public from the meeting in terms of section 50A4 and paragraph 6, 9, 10, uh, part 1 of Schedule 70 of the Local Government Scotland Act 1973. And would this committee, this uh, thing we talked about the last time, the deferral the last time, uh, I think it's an important integral part of the consultation process.